trail of the truth for over 40 years. If anything, he's, he's probably the expert. He has spawned most of the, the researchers you know, such as Zachariah Sitchin and David Icke and so on. He brought them to the public. Jordan has not been credited in half the way that he should be. And, and I want to do that right here. We're not supposed to have law and order yet. We're supposed to have crime and the immorality and the drugs and the murder and all the other things that we are besieged by. We're supposed to have that. If the government did not want it, it would not be here. Believe me. This is the most powerful government the world has ever known. They have, a, they have the ability to get a hold on Adolf Hitler 50 years ago. He had a standing army, the greatest navy, air force, military, secret underworld organizations operating throughout the world. But this government got a hold on Adolf Hitler because it chose to and it wanted to. And if you do not pay your income taxes, they will find you if you go to the Amazon jungle and they will make an example of you. They will find you and they will deal with you and you know it but for some reason they're unable to get a handle on drugs and the crime in the streets for some reason there is a reason and that's what we want to talk about there is a method to the madness you want to ask yourself too where did Adolf Hitler and the communist government today get their money who financed Stalin who financed Lenin Trotsky who financed the communist revolution? You might want to ask yourself, what part did American Wall Street play? The international bankers in New York, in Switzerland, in London, what part do they play in financing people like Hitler, like the communist movement, and God knows what else they're financing throughout the world? Why is it that drugs are brought into this country daily and we're not able to do anything about it? We're not able to do anything about the aliens pouring in across the border. I am here to tell you why. It is very simple. The government gets what it wants. There is a method to the madness, as we said, and we're going to explain that to you. And uh, he's given some of our lead researchers some information, and they've never credited him. Okay, so you may think it comes from them and that they're so smart and brilliant. Believe me. They wouldn't be half the place they are today if it wasn't for Jordan Maxwell. And so we really want to honor him to here today. And we're very proud to have him speak at a Project Camelot conference. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think the one thing I'd like for you to take away from anything that I say today is this one point, that nothing in this world works the way you think it does. Nothing. The police aren't who you think they are. The sheriff is not who you think he is. Banks do not do what you think they do. Governments don't operate anywhere near the way you think they do. And that's why today when you look at what's going on in the world today, none of it makes any sense. It's all crazy. It makes no sense at all seems very destructive, but actually, in point of fact, you don't know how the system works. It's working perfectly fine. The rich get richer and the poor get poorer, and the people, the masses, are entertained with television and alcohol and drugs, and the wealthy continue to get wealthy, and so it's working perfectly fine. Once you understand how the world really works, and nothing works the way you think it does. When you begin to break down how government works, banks work, you begin to see a whole world that you've never known. The word I use is occult. Occult simply means hidden. And this is exactly what is going on in the world today. Our governments, banks, institutions of education, etc., are operating on a t totally occult or hidden basis. And so what we are told and given to understand is not the truth.
Let me give you an example. Then. Kids that graduate from high school wear black robes. Judges wear black robes. Rabbis wear black robes because black robes represent the planet Saturn. They are a symbol for the planet Saturn. Saturn was called by the ancient people Lord of the Rings. And Saturn is Lord of the Rings. This is why women were told in the ancient world to listen to their God. And the concept was they would wear an ear ring. Men were to get married before their gods. They wear a wedding ring. Because the old ancient God of the Middle East, one of the ancient gods of the Middle East, uh, was the planet Saturn. Saturn was d directly connected to Yahweh, the Hebrew God. And so this is why even today the Jews celebrate the worship of Saturn. Saturn in the old Phoenician language was called Shabbath. Look up in the Phoenician language, you will find that the planet Saturn was called Shabbath. And his, his worship to honor him once a week was called Sabbath. So when, when the Jews are having Sabbath, they're actually paying homage to their god Saturn. Lord of the Rings. And so when you start breaking down where religions have come from, theologies have come from, the six-pointed star, for instance, is, not, is called the Star of David. Actually, it's not the Star of David. All the encyclopedias and reference works will tell you that it's called the Star of Saturn. It is a hexagram. Hexagrams represented the planet Saturn. So... And then when you look at the Christian system of things, uh, the church is a, is a disgrace, in my opinion, period. The Christian church is a disgrace. Everything, everything that comes out of the Christian church in America is a disgrace. It's filled with lies, deception, innuendos. It is a money-making corporation. It operates under maritime admiralty law. And there is a whole world of knowledge that Christians have not been given about the scriptures, about who wrote the Bible, where it came from. I have found that even Judaism is not a B.C. religion. It did not exist in the B.C. You know, so when we talk about ancient Jerusalem, there was no ancient uh, Israel. Jerusalem, yes, but no ancient Israel. So when you think about and how you will have preachers and, and religious leaders talk about ancient Israel this and ancient Israel that, in point of fact, Israel is not a B.C. religion. The whole concept of the Old Testament was developed uh, right around the 9th, 10th, and 11th, and 12th century A.D. So that the Old Testament is not an ancient record of an ancient people. There was no ancient Israel. Two of the greatest scholars, archaeologists in Israel, <clears throat> have written a book called Unearthing the Bible. And these two men, these two archaeologists, are the best and the brightest of the archaeologists in Israel. And in their book, basically, that's what they said. There was no Moses, there was no King Solomon, there was no King David. The entire thing was written probably in the 8th, 9th, and 10th century A.D. in Europe. Uh, developed and ultimately taken, all of that was taken by the Jesuits in the Catholic Church and rewoven into a story and given to us today as an ancient Israel. Even in the ancient Bibles, the old Bibles from uh, the 12th, 13th, and 14th century, um, in the Bible it didn't say King King David, it kept talking about King Druid. And incidentally, the, the, the system of government and laws that we live under today in America and in the Western world is a Druidic system. America is a Druidic country. Uh, and Canada is Druidic. Uh, like I said, Western civilization is a Druidic establishment. The Druids were a very powerful priesthood in Europe, um, even before the Roman Empire existed. And they were, the, they were the attorneys, the lawyers, the religious leaders, the politicians. It was called the Druidic system. And uh, one of the most important symbols in the Druidic system was a magic wand, like Merlin the magician with his magic wand. And orchestra leaders and conductors used a magic wand. That's a Druid symbol. 
and the Druid symbol of the magic wand was made out of the wood of a holly tree. It's made out of Hollywood. And the entire establishment in Hollywood is a Druidic system. So if you don't understand Druidic symbols, you'll never know what's going on in Hollywood and where they're being financed, who's financing them, and how this stuff really works in relation to government. There's an enormous amount of material out on the web showing uh, pictures from motion pictures from five, six, seven years before 2000, uh, before 9-11, in which 9-11 is in motion pictures. And the original film of um, Matrix, in the original Matrix movie, the star is giving uh, some kind of an affidavit to sign, which is his identification or something, and the camera zooms in on it for just a moment when he's signing it, but if you stop the film, stop it and back it up and zoom in, you will see the, the, the document is about something that is going to happen. It says September 11, 2001. And this was way before September 11, uh, before 9-11. Uh, Chris Carter, classic example of what I'm talking about Hollywood. Chris Carter, uh, the, the creator of uh, X-Files, uh, when X-Files ended, Chris Carter, the producer, started a whole new television series called The uh, Lone Gunman. And the very first uh, movie was a, was a lead-off movie for the new television series. And in that movie, that came out right around February or March of 2001. February or March of 2001, Chris Carter's new television show called Lone Gunman was started on Fox television. And in the very first episode, it's talking about how factions within the U.S. government were going to fly 757s into the World Trade Center and lock them down purposely. And in the movie, you're seeing the planes going into the World Trade Center. That was back in, you know, eight, eight months before it even happened. Chris Carter is telling you something in the movie. And, and in the movie, they, uh, they asked, well, why are these people in the government doing it? And the, one of the guys in government said, because, because we need to control the Middle East, we need to control the oil flow, we need to have a, a dominant um, a place in the Middle East so that we can promote wars, which is good for business. And, uh, but that's in a movie. And it shows the planes going into the World Trade Center. General Electric, about three or four years before 9-11, uh, General Electric came out with a refrigerator in Italy. And on the face of the refrigerator, painted, were two jets flying into the World Trade Center. It shows the World Trade Center and two big planes flying into them. And I have many, many pictures from Hollywood showing 9-11 jets flying into the World Trade Center, so all I'm saying is that Hollywood knows what's going on. And this whole thing is being orchestrated from behind the scenes to knock down the World Trade Center. I mean, and, and the day it happened, I became so depressed, I just dropped out of speaking. I no longer toured. I no longer did radio. I no longer talked to anyone. And I've been out of commission for many years because 9-11 just shut me down. As far as I was concerned, I was through with America. I'm through with all of it. Because in any country that can buy three high-rises falling down into dust and not ask any questions about that, I just gave up. I thought, you know, 